Right. Welcome back. So we are moving on to the second part of Act 1, Scene 2. Remember we concluded with the part that uh, Prospero puts uh, his daughter Miranda to sleep after revealing um, the story of the past and how they've come about to the present onto the island, right? And I told you the second part is quite a long one. We'll, we'll just go through it uh, in some detail, certain parts. And this uh, this section is devoted to Prospero's uh, two of his uh, slaves, uh, slaves to a certain extent, Ariel, who is more of the uh, friendly uh, spirit, the slave, and Caliban, who is more of the, the savage kind, probably as we get to know the inhabitant of the island. So we begin from line 220, and you see when a Ariel enters, Remember one thing, Ariel can, is only visible to Prospero. So it, Miranda doesn't know of Ariel's existence. She knows that there are spirits, good spirits about, but she doesn't know about Ariel. So Ariel immediately says that, uh, uh, I, I'm here at your service. You see, I come to answer thy best pleasure. I'm always here at your service. So whatever you wish to do, whatever you would um, you would want me to, um, you, your command is my wish be to fly to swim to dive into the fire to ride on the curled clouds to the, do to thy strong bidding task Ariel and all his quality so everything about me is uh, is for you so Ariel and his quality so his when he's talking about his quality means all his uh, companions all the others associated with him so everyone is at your beck and call and whatever wherever you want us to go we are there. Now you see this entire thing about fly, swim, dive, fire. It immediately takes you back to the first scene of the play. So there is a link here, right? Remember that. Uh, so Prospero says, has thou spirit to perform to point the tempest that I bade thee? Have you, have you done what I asked you to do? Um, so you know now, immediately from this sentence, that the tempest was not an act of nature, it was an act of magic, right? Okay, so then, uh, so as we move, uh, that I bade thee, he says, uh, to every article. I mean, I have done it exactly how you wanted me to be done and what did he do I boarded the king's ship on the beak waist deck so every part of the ship I set it on fire yes and sometimes I would divide split into parts and one part would go to top mast the other to the bow split so one at the front one at the uh, back so every aspect of the the middle the front the back waist you know is the middle so every aspect of it has been um, I have, I have burnt it yes um, the yard, the bowsprit, would I flame distinctly then meet and join? So I would set it on fire and then come back and become one again. Jove's lighting, the percusses of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight out running were not. So I was as quick, perhaps quicker than even the lightning. And why, why, why Jove? Because Jupiter is the, is the god of the Roman mythology. His chief, his chief weapon, you know, is a thunderbolt. So he said that what, um, uh, the the light and the sound and the fury they were quicker and faster and more effective than perhaps even Jupiter's own thunderbolts, yes? And uh, and then the fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege. Yes, so, so the sulphurous roaring. So when you're talking about the sulphurous uh, roaring, you're, you, are, you are now talking about the fire, the light that has come, yes? <clears throat> so even the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege. So it appeared as, as if his, uh, the, you know, the, the god of sea himself was taken aback by this assault. Yes, uh, because it was, it's happening on fire, right? Uh, sorry, on water. So this entire fire, as if the whole attack is, uh, is sort of, uh, uh, it comes down together to a point. Uh, and make his bold ways tremble in his dread trident shake. So that is a symbol of Neptune, the trident. So the fire and thunder and lightning was so, so, so effective and so strong and so powerful that even the waves 
Neptune was powerless. His trident shook. Yes. So Prospero goes on to praise um, uh, Ariel here, brave spirit. Who else can be so firm, so constant that this coil would not infect his reason? Yes. I mean that he he sort of is so firm in his whatever he does. Who else? Who else can be? Who else can be so noble and and remain so fixed onto the task? Um, that this turmoil would not infect his reason. So when you see this kind of uh, torment and this tumult is happening around, he still doesn't waver from his path. He keeps on. Not a soul but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. Not a soul but felt a fever of the mad. So he's, he's very clear that, uh, um, uh, you know, it is, it's something that it affected each and every one. Um, because it was so intense, yes, and and it was it like uh, it was uh, very clear as to how they were getting affected by this onslaught, yes, and you would not expect anybody else to be calm in this kind of a situation. All but mariners plunge in the foaming brine and quit the vessel. So they were they were so desperate to save themselves that they jumped into the fire, and then he points out that the mariners did not jump off. Remember in a ship. The crew and the captain, the last to leave it here. The others left. Then all fire with me, the king's son Ferdinand with hair upstaring, then like reeds not hair, was the first man they left. Hell is empty and all the devils are here. So <clears throat> he says something which we have to remember, that it was Ferdinand, yes, who was the first first who jumped off the ship. Yes, and he, he was very clear that, that this is the end. Hell is empty. That means all the evil has landed here on this ship and we have to we have to jump out if we have to save ourselves so ferdinand was the first to abandon um, abandon the ship and and prospero's question is i hope it was clear near the uh, near the shore it was very close says ariel uh, but are they safe yes not a hair patch remember what prospero told miranda not a hair has been harmed on the sustaining garments, not a blemish, not a thread is out of place on their garments. There is not, not a tear and it appears to be as good as it was when they set sail. But what he did, I've, I've, I've dispersed them about the isle. They are in different groups along the island. They are not together. And Ferdinand is alone. The king's son have I landed by myself. So there is a plan here. Everything is done according to Prospero's plan. Yes. Um, whom I left cooling of the air with sides in an odd angle of the island, sitting his arms in a sad knot. So he's sitting dejected, bemoaning his fate, yes. And then Prospero asks of the king's ship, the mariners say, how thou has this, what have you done to the ship and the mariners? So he, he says, they're safely in harbour and in a little nook there, away from prying eyes where nobody can see it, uh, then where once and he reminds it that was a place where you once uh, called me up at midnight at midnight you you asked me to go there to pick up fetch dew from the still vexed vermouthes do you remember when i in my first introduction i said shakespeare was influenced by the um, by the sailing of ships especially um, the sea venture uh, which is believed to have uh, sunk near the bermuda so this is a reference to that here uh, still vexed uh, Bermuthe, still, you know, uh, vexed Bermuthe here, of course, is uh, he, he is talking about uh, where the storm has still caused a lot of havoc in the Bermudas. And that point in time, you had sent me there to uh, pick up uh, dew, which is dew is, you know, typical uh, kind of an, uh, a kind of herb or some particle that you associate with magic and witchcraft, right? <clears throat> and they are all, where are the mariners? They are all below deck, sleeping, magical sleep. Yes, I've left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again and are upon the Mediterranean float. And the rest of them, she, he has already sort of um, sent, set them afloat. They are on their way at sea, bound sadly home for Naples. The rest of them, assuming that, the the rest uh, the remaining they are all that is left of the ship that sailed from Tunis the rest have all died supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perished 
with the with the assumption that the king of Naples is dead and everything on board that ship has perished. Yes. So what is Prospero's next question? Ariel, thy charge exactly. You have performed exactly what I've asked you to do. But there is more work. And then comes Shakespeare's reference to unity of time. Past the mid-season. So it's past 12 o'clock, two glasses. So it's two o'clock. So between now and six, we have to do most of our work. So Ariel is surprised. Is there more toil? I've got more. Oh, but before that, Ariel gives a gentle reminder to Prospero. Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed. Just let me remind you. Because you, you are giving me one task after the other. So let me remind you what you had promised me earlier. Ah, so how now Moody said, why is there a change of tone here? Why are you being so, imp why are you being so impertinent? Yes? Mm, uh, what is it thou canst demand? What is it that you are asking for? Yes, what is it that I have gi I haven't given you that you're asking for? My freedom, my liberty. Now, Prospero is very clear. There is, there will be a time for it. I don't want to hear about it now. Yes, I pray thee remember I've done thee worthy service. Just, just Ariel is just reminding Prospero. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. I didn't lie to you. I did not. I did not. Uh, I at no point in time. Um, made any mistakes with what you ordered me to do. I did not grumble about all that you ordered me to do. I did not crib. But you did promise. You did promise that you would reduce, to bait me a full year, to reduce my slavery by a year. But what does Prospero say? Again, like he took Miranda to the past, he's taking Ariel to the past. Do you, have you forgotten how... From what pain I have saved you from? Yes, from what pain I have salvaged you? Yes, what I had saved you from? Uh, no. So thou, I, I, but I, Prospero says, but I think you do. Yes. Uh, and thinkest it much to tread the ooze of the salt water, to run, run the sharp wind of the knot, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost? But I think, I think you, you have forgotten it. Yes, uh, and because you're complaining about all the work that you're, you are doing for me. Yes, you're running with the wind, you're walking on, on the burning ground, you are uh, you're working at, you're talk, at different uh, inclement weather that you have uh, worked uh, for. Yes, I, I think uh, you are forgetting the pain that you had suffered. Yes, so it's it's very clear that uh, uh, you have forgotten how much you owe me uh, from the pain that I had rescued you. Yes, uh, so then uh, Ariel goes on to say, I do not, sir. Prospero is, you can see a different side of Prospero. Thou liest, malignant thing, he says. That is uh, line 304. You are lying. Mal and why does he call It's just abusing him. You, you are lying. You are, you are somebody who, who doesn't remember uh, goodness. Ungrateful you are. Malignant is ungrateful. Have you forgotten Sycorax? Or Sycorax? It's an, uh, a proper noun. So either you pronounce it as Sycorax or Sycorax. Who, what had he done? Who, who, with age and envy, was grown into a hoop? You know, when, when you're old and your back is bent, what happens? You grow into a hoop. Yes, this is the shape that you're talking about. Yes, a hoop. Yes. Uh, have you forgotten? No, I haven't forgotten. But so it, now it's a memory test. Where was she born? In uh, in uh, Algiers. Yes, Algiers. That is modern Algiers. Who was she? I must once a month recount. So he said, I must remind you once a month in, in, because I feel you're forgetting all the pain that I relieved you from. Yes. And the Sycorax, what had she done? She's known for a mischief, Nanny Fold, and she's known for a witchcraft and sorcery. Yes. She was, because of that, she was banished from Algiers because she was condemned for witchcraft. Yes. 
and uh, there was one thing why because her life was not taken because she was then at that point in time pregnant yes and so she was left on this island by the sailors yes and uh, and at that point in time when sikorax came or sikorax came to the island uh, she imprisoned you you became her servant and for thou was the spirit to delicate to act her earthy and a board commands refusing a grandest and because you are too delicate a creature you are too mild a creature you are too mellow a creature to to follow her her harsh dictates her harsh commands what did she do she got angry with you and what did she do in her anger she split open a pine put you inside and imprisoned you and i when i came you were there within split pine uh, the trunk of the pine tree for nearly 12 years and within the 12 years what had happened psychorax passed away so there was no way that uh, uh, her son knew about it the son who was born to her in between so ariel was kept in prison yes and then then when i came to the island that's what prospero says uh, i i i could hear you because you were crying like i said uh, where thou dost vent thy groans as fast as wind mills strike you know when the wind mills uh, the the fans rotate they make that kind of unbelievable loud um, sound yes you kept crying and groaning but there was nobody to hear you because there was only this a child a freckled whelp hag born not honored with a human shape a very deformed shape a deformed creature that was born out of a witch was all was there so you kept crying with pain crying to be released but there was nobody and then you have the first time a reference by ariel yes caliban her son yes caliban was there Prospero says, "Dull thing, I say so. He that Caliban, whom now I keep in service, he he was dull. He was stupid. Calls him stupid, and now he is my slave. That's what Prospero says. And you know, you know how I heard you. I heard your torment. I heard your cries. You used to cry with such agony that even the crying of the wolves, you know, that it would invoke wolves. You know what happens? It generally believe that when one wolf howls, the others howl." in unison so your crying would evoke the crying of the wolves on the island yes and even it was so mournful and so so piteous that even uh, you know the bears who believed to be the uh, harshest of all animals even they would feel sorry yes because that was the uh, pain that psychorax uh, ca- pushed you into yes and it was my magic says prospero that freed you from it yes i opened the pine tree and got you out and that's what adel says i thank the master for it so then prospero says then why are you complaining if you complain once more i shall split the oak and put you back again for another 12 years so adel apologizes and what does prospero say that i will release you after 2 days line 350 i'll release you after two days okay uh, okay ariel accepts it and asks for what is next set of work that he has to do go and make thyself like a nymph of the sea be subject to no sight by thine and mine so change yourself into a spirit airy spirit like a nymph of the sea a mermaid who only i will be able to see you yes go take the shape and come hither come it go hence with diligence so go go with good faith yes go with good faith and then ariel exits okay then comes the next stage when uh, when um, miranda uh, when prospero actually uh, is awakened by uh, uh, miranda is actually awakened by prospero and uh, the caliban part of the story begins i think i shall stop here for now i'll divide i will continue with part 2 within 2 minutes so it will be easy for you to follow the matter yes it is coming back in 2 minutes the next part of part 2
part two subset yes okay